Thank you, Jesus. You're a great God. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise you, God. It's a name we're lifting up this morning, God. Hallelujah. It's your name that's lifted up high, Father God. Yes. And great is your name, Father yes. God. Great is your name, Jesus.
equal to him. That's something to be praised about. Come on, church. That's something to be happy about. That there is no rival. That God is a victor this morning. We're going to sing that over. Hallelujah. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. And yours
not think that just because you would say I made a mistake. See, God puts his proof and evidence of himself all over the earth realm. Your fingerprint is the only fingerprint like it. The sound of your voice is the only voice that will ever sound that way. God has use of you. The kingdom of heaven is nigh. Now you miss, I've been hearing that same song. I've been hearing that same thing since I was yet a little one. The word says that his ways are much higher than ours. The word says that we would not understand and fathom the wholeness of what he is, but what I do know is that the times are changed. When I was born into the 80s in the earth realm, they said then was the worst it. I beg to differ to see that now is the worst that it had been, but God is not a God that changed. He's the same. He was the same then. He's the same now. He'll be the same tomorrow. And what he is is he's a God who created you in his very own image. He's a God that loves you right where you are. He's a God that's a way maker. He's the God that holds the keys for your identity, to who you are, to who you're supposed to be. You're not a failure. You're not a mistake. You're not unworthy. And you've not done too much. As far as the east is from the west, your father has said, he's removed your sins from you. When you wake up in the morning, my heart's cry for you is for you to know that you know that you are in right fellowship and relationship with your God, yes. with the Father and the Holy Spirit. If you are not, I pray that you hear, let he that has an ear hear. That you do not walk out of this door without getting into a proper alignment with your Father. We're going to open the altar now. Salvation is nigh. The Holy Spirit wants to pour out on you. I'm believing that those who are waiting for some giftings to be activated, that is available to you now at the altar as well. So I need a cadence. I need my drummer to give me a beat. I need my songstress to sing them on up here. Oh God, I'm just going to pray. And as the Lord would cause you to come up, Oh God, we just bless your name. We thank you that you are the God of second chance after second chance after second chance. Oh God, we thank you that you are a forgiving God. We thank you for every example that you've given us in your word, oh God, of how the people walked away from you, oh God, of how they worshiped other false images, oh God, of how they put themselves before you, oh God, of how they didn't even bring anything to offer for you, oh God, and when they did, oh God, it was tainted, oh God, but yet you were faithful to forgive, oh God, yet you were faithful, oh God, when there was a sound of one interceding, praying on the behalf of the kingdom, oh God, on behalf of those who did not love you, oh God, there was one that cried out, oh God, and you listened, oh God, so Father, I just asked, oh God, that you would move, oh God, I asked, oh God, that you would usher your sons and your daughters before your glory, this is not about me, this is not about the shepherds in the house, this is about you, if you are standing under the sound of my voice, and you know that you are out of relationship, ready to come into a relationship with Jesus, now is the time, the time is nigh, I don't care what the world is reporting, I don't from that chain in the name of Jesus. And I tell you that there is a point in time and that there is a point in place for you to come into a relationship. See, there's nothing that I'd rather do. There's nothing that I'd rather see than to rejoice with you. Coming into a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Coming into the truth. Coming into the light. See, wherever there is light, darkness cannot stay. Whatever in the name of Jesus is, there is deliverance. Whatever Jesus' name is, there is the cadence of heaven marching, beating for you, ushering you in. Oh, I'm believing with That you can come out from wherever you are. That you can be released and be redeemed. God is a redeemer of time. God is a redeemer and transcends all time. So there is not time that's lost, but all the time before you in Christ Jesus. Oh God, I just thank you for giving a ring of word to your sons and to your daughters, oh God. And I, I just want to tell you, not from a place of condemnation, but whenever you come under the sound of a man or woman of God and they're beginning to speak over you, you are accountable for that word. So I want you to be careful. When you come under men and women, God, when you come to the house, I want you to be careful because you are accountable for everything that you hear, for everything that is taught, and for everything that is said. Oh, God, we just bless you. We thank you. So if there are any 
ground, oh God. Father, that it will do exactly what you said it would do. Oh God, we thank you for your word that says it will not return void, oh God. And I thank you that as the shepherd speaks, oh God, he is being ministered to as well, Lord God. And that there is a constant and continual refreshing from him to the sheep and back to you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to move into our tithe and offering. Amen. And I had a scripture this morning. Forgive me, saints. I thought I marked it.
confess to our confession of faith. Amen. This is our declaration in this house. We proclaim it because we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. 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 Count to three. Ready? One, two, three. Right now, church is my church. I love my church and my church loves me. Here we believe and follow the full gospel of Jesus Christ. Here we believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I am excited to see that people are standing in line to get into this church to get here right now. Every seat is filled in every service. We pack out the house and are ready for expansion. It is natural for us to see signs, wonders, and miracles. Many who come into this house are saved and transformed for the glory of God. Every member of this church functions in their place of everybody. Good morning and welcome to our visitors. Thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. Amen. Church family, would you help me welcome our visitors? Amen. Amen. I don't plan to uh, 
I'll keep you long here this morning. And I'm um, going to kind of piggyback on last week. Last week we spoke about finishing your race and being fruitful even out of season. Even when things are not going your way, God still should be able to move through you. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. I said, yeah. even when things are not going your way, God still should be able to move through you. Amen. That's being in season and out of season. Even when you're out of season, you still should bear fruit. Even when the odds are against you, you still should bear fruit. Even when people are talking about you, you still should bear fruit. Even when you're down to your last dollar, you still should bear fruit. Even when you lose that job, you still should bear fruit. Even when the kids are not acting right, you still should bear fruit. Every season, in season and out of season, even on your rough days, even when you're upset, you still should bear fruit. But how, Pastor? How do I bear fruit in times of trouble? How do I bear fruit when people are against me? How do I bear fruit when people are talking about me and they're talking things that are not true? How do I bear fruit when I just lost my job? How do I bear fruit when I just lost a loved one, how do I bear fruit when things are not going my way? How do I bear fruit when everything that I try to do right goes wrong? Pastor, how do I bear fruit in those times? I'm glad you asked that question. But I'm going to ask you to hold out to it for a moment. I will get back to you, amen? As long as you come three weeks from now, I'm going to answer that question. Allowing me to paint a bigger picture for you of how important it is that we are constantly bearing fruit. If you will go with me to Mark 11, 12, 14. says here the next day as they were leaving Bethany Jesus was hungry seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf he went to find out if it had any fruit when he reached it he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs then he said to the tree may no one ever eat fruit from you again and his disciples heard him say it. And so there wasn't the season for figs. But from a distance, it looked like it should have been bearing some fruit. From a distance, it was, it, it was looking full. You see, and some of us are walking around, and from a distance, it looked like a serving God. From a distance, you look like you like you got it all together. From a distance, it looked like we should be bearing fruit. But it wasn't the season. And some of us go through some times where it's not our season. See, we still have the characteristics in us where we should be bearing fruit. We still are walking with Jesus. Jesus is still alive and well in us. Jesus created that tree to do something, and that tree's job was to bear fruit. And when he went to it hungry and he seen that it didn't do what it was created to do, he cursed that tree. See, we need to be really careful that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Be 
Because there comes a time in life where Jesus needs you to do something. There comes a time in life where Jesus is, is hungry and is, he thirsts and he hungers for spiritual things. And the disciples came to him and was asking him about food. He said, I have food you don't know about. Spiritual things. See, he hungers after these spiritual things. And when he's hungry, when he wants to see somebody saved, when he wants somebody to be ministered to, guess who he does it through? You and I. See, the word of the Lord says, those that wait upon the Lord. Yes. Amen. Rise up. Wings like eagles. It wasn't. It, it's not. It's not those that it, that wait upon them and do nothing. Those that are just sitting back and doing nothing. No, this wait is a word as a waiter or a waitress. We have to serve Him. Those that serve the Lord. Those that are that are at His beckoning call. Those that are always serving Him. to a good restaurant, when you got a good waiter, when you got a good waitress, they don't let you let your, your cup get empty. It's full before you know it. You see, we can't let Jesus' cup get empty. We have to wait on him. We have to serve him. God is serious about his plan. He is serious about the things that he does and, the, and, and what he has created you to do. He is serious about that. Let us not come to a time, oh, I pray that I've never come to a time where Jesus needs me to do something. Where Jesus needs me to do something and I'm not ready. Where Jesus needs me to do something and, and I just say, I just say no, or there's no fruit that I can bear. Where I can't help somebody out because I say, oh, it's not my season. Or I can't help nobody out because I say, oh, I'm not ready. You know how many times members of the body of Christ say, oh, I'm not ready. But it's sad because we miss an opportunity to wait on the Lord. We miss an opportunity to serve him. We miss an opportunity for someone else to come to know him. Jesus wants us to be hot and bear fruit in every season. In season and out of season, we got to bear fruit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You see, it's easy to bear fruit in season. Do I have any witnesses here this morning? It's easy to bear fruit when everything's going good. Amen. It's easy to bear fruit when you just got that raise. Amen. It's easy to bear fruit when you got that promotion. Right. It's easy to bear fruit when everybody in your house is is on point and doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's easy to bear fruit when, you, when your wife is treating you at the best. It's easy to bear fruit when your husband is treating you like a queen. It's easy to bear fruit because you got that smile on your face. You just, you're, you're the queen of the world. It's easy to 
bear fruit then, right? Amen. Amen. It's easy to bear fruit when everything is going good. You try to start a you try to start your own business and it just blows up. It's easy to bear fruit. Yeah, everything's going good. something done when you're at, at, at work and it's, it's to that last minute. They need it done and they're hounding you. You got it done yet? You got it done yet? You got it done yet? Can you bear peace?
Maybe the person sitting around you is retired or they uh, own their own business and they don't have to have to deal with, with a boss or they don't have to deal with some customers that keep on asking them, are you done yet? They don't have to deal with, with, um, with meetings every single morning. See, the person next to you deals with something a little different, so we have to ask ourselves, because I surely can't stand up here and tell you what's your out of season. I can stand up here and tell you what's my out of season, but I can't tell you what's yours, so it's going to take a little homework this day, and it's going to take a little thinking this day, and it's going to take a little bit searching our heart today and see what is our audit season. God, tell me, when do I get flustered? Tell me, Lord God, when do I get out of my love? Tell me, Lord God, when do I lose my joy? Tell me, when do I lose my peace? Tell me, when do I lose my patience and my kindness? When am I not kind to people? When do I not have goodness, my faithfulness, God? When can you not trust me, oh God? Is there something in my life that I'm not trustworthy, God? What happens to me? What makes me in that place where I'm out of season? You see, you still look the same. You still look like that fig tree. You may be upset deep inside. You still look like the same you. So your loved one comes to you. They don't know that you're out of season. They don't know what just happened at work and that you're upset and you came home and you bring that mess home. They don't know that. They don't understand that. But at that point in time, you lose that self-control. You lose that patience because you're out of season. But Jesus said that we have to be in season and out of season. We have to bear fruit. So God, would you show us this morning? Let us pray, Father, would you show us this morning where and when we are out of season. What gets us to a point where we're out of season? What gets us to a point, oh God, where we can bear the fruit, God? Would you help us to turn it around so that we will bear fruit in every situation, in every season, in Jesus' mighty name? You see, we don't get to say, well, I just don't feel like it today. God understands I'm having a bad day. No, Jesus went to that tree and he said, you weren't doing what I thought you should be. The way, the way I seen you is not what you were producing. Well, Jesus, God know, God knows my heart. He knows me. He knows I'm just having a bad day. I'll get over it. But he knows that we still send the truth. in season and out of season. I know what your question still stands. How do I bear fruit at this time? You're telling me, Pastor, that I need to bear fruit, but how do I bear fruit? Matthew 17, 20 and 21. He said to them, because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Amen. However, this kind goes out. However, this kind goes not out by, but by prayer and fasting. You see, this was at a time where the disciples came and asked Jesus, why were they not able to cast out this demon? Why were they not able to do what he had told them to do? Why was he, 
not able to do what they were created to do, the giftings that they had, and Jesus sent them out and to do something. Why were they not able to bear fruit at that moment? talks about their faith, but he, then he says that this kind goes out by prayer and fasting. And no, it's not the time where something is happening and you can't, you can't get, you can't set somebody free and you can't deliver somebody and, and, and the evil spirit is cast out and you can't do something God has called you to do, so then you go, you fast and you pray and you try to come back and do it. Jesus doesn't show us that when he went out and he cast out, he already did it. He didn't have to go fast and pray. Why? Because he was already in there. He already fasted. He already prayed. You see, prayer and fasting gets us close to God. Prayer and fasting gets us into God. We get deeper with God. We can do the deeper things in the spiritual realm. We can do the deeper things in this world, the things that he has called us to do. But it takes time in his presence. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. You see, we have to be in him. Hallelujah. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying if you want to bear fruit, you have to be in him. The disciples came and said, why couldn't we do this? He said, you have to be in me. You have to spend time with the Father. You have to spend time with prayer and fasting. You have to spend time in me. Then you can do the things that I can do. Then you can have joy when people are crazy around you. Then you can have peace when the world is acting foolish around you. Then we can bear fruit in season and out of season. Oh, he takes this and he says that you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed. You will say to this mountain, move from here to there. See, the Bible doesn't say that we don't have faith because it says that Jesus gave us the measure of faith. God gave us a measure of faith to each and every one of us. So surely I must have at least a little bit. You see, for years I've always looked at this and seen that people would always say to have just a little bit. All you need is a little bit of faith. All you need is a little bit of faith. He said, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed. And it also, the Bible also explains how the mustard seed is very small, but then grows to be a big tree where even birds come in and make homes. But what happens to this mustard seed. Even though it's very small, even though it's very little, it gets put in the ground. It gets covered with dirt. It gets stepped on, it gets trampled on. But it doesn't let that stop. The mustard seed, it doesn't let everything that has come against it, the dirt has come on top of it, people have trampled on it. And it still breaks through all of that and it grows. It pushes through. It doesn't allow how small it is to determine how big it can grow. You see, so I'm here this morning to share with you that if you have faith like the grain of a mustard seed, it doesn't matter where you're at right now. 
It doesn't matter how much you know right now. It doesn't matter what you've been through and what you're going through. It only matters if you push through. It only matters if you know that God has called you to something great. See, it didn't say, the mustard seed never said, oh, I'm so small, I can never be anything. Oh, I'm so small, I can never do anything well. They put me in the dirt and they trampled over me. People talked about me and people stepped on me. It doesn't say anything like that. And I'm here to tell you, and I'm here to encourage you this morning, you either should ever say how small you are or how how much you don't know or what you haven't been through and what you haven't done and the things that you're going through right now and all the things that are happening to you and it just feels like you're being buried and the dirt is going on top of you. It doesn't say to do that, but I'm here to tell you to push past everything that has come against you because God is calling you to be something great. God is calling you to be a big tree where others can come in and find rest, where others can come in and find a home, where others can come in and find peace within you. And this is how we bear fruit, even out of season. This is how we bear fruit in our bad times. This is how we bear fruit when everything is against us, when we push through, when we look ahead, when we believe what God says about us. God is calling each and every one of us to bear fruit, no matter what season you're in. No matter what's going on in your life, it's time to bear fruit. At this time, we're going to leave the altars open for anyone that needs prayer for any reason at all. If you know that you've been going through a season, you know that you've been going through a hard time in your life. You just need to bear some fruit right now. God's ready to meet you. The altar is open for you. If you would, Brian, just give us around you at this point. doesn't matter who you know or who you came with. It's all about you and Jesus.
just pray in the mighty name of Jesus right now. For those that have made their way forward, God. For those that have always want to be very true. That always want to find themselves in you. That when you come, they'll be ready. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would bless them, anoint them, Lord. They would know they're out of season. They would be careful to bear fruit, even in those times. Father, I say here we are, all of us, oh God. Would you help each and every one of us, Lord? and every one of you bear peace joy love kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self control may you bear it all in the mighty name of Jesus may that be your portion today that you leave out of here with each and every one of you right now that are under the sound of my voice. Would you walk with him? Would you live for him? Would you be a blessing to others? Jesus. 